That was more like uh, Abbey Road, actually, because Power Cut, Lazy Dynamite, and what's the other one? They were all made into a medley, which is like, that means I have three songs that I couldn't finish. <laughs> so jam them all together, and it's a medley. And um, there, there was a lot more thought that went into that. We did some recording. Uh, we did some of that at uh, Olympic Studios with Glenn Johns. Paul was always hoping to find a producer that he could work with. And, you know, he was such a brilliant producer that I think he found it difficult to get that uh, relationship going with, a, with another person on his music. So Glenn worked with us for a while, and it, and it was interesting. Uh, Glenn got, I must say, he got one of the best drum sounds on me that I'd ever gotten, and that was over at Olympic by, by putting a microphone here, here, and six feet in front of the bass drum. Just three U87 microphones and blending it all so that the drummer got to make this. It was like listening to, the, to a good drummer live. It really was. It was brilliant. And, uh, and those, uh, we did a lot of stuff that wasn't released. Was Tragedy ever released over there? No. There were a lot of outtakes that were interesting and Loop, First Indian on the Moon and uh, Jazz Street. There was a lot of stuff that was done. So we were doing a lot of experimentation as well, but Paul had some nice songs written for that album. And not having studio musicians per se, you know, we, we had to, uh, but that's the beauty of it. See, there's that fine line of studio musicians that just go in, hear it, and play it, and then band musicians that have a different take on it. And we had become a band where everybody's influence on everybody else's parts was what was so interesting. And by that time, when we were recording with, you know, we recorded with Glenn, we recorded uh, over at uh, Trident Studios. We finished up some tracks over at Trident. Uh, I remember Viv Stanchel coming by one day. Uh, there, there were just some, we had become a band, and it was a different animal than the Ram Sessions, totally. And some, di some days it wouldn't take four or five hours to get a track. It might take 12 hours. But when we would be finished and satisfied with the, the basic track for it, it would also be a little different than just some studio musicians that are very competent, you know. And I, I really, I wanted to make that shift, too, from just being that guy that can go in, go in and nail it immediately to, to let it evolve and, and let it grow into something that's got more of a personality and, and more of a, that band, uh, that certain thing that bands have, you know, it's just hard to put a word on that one. <laughs> I did, I gotta be honest, I didn't. I thought, great song, I know you love Linda, this is not a rocker, good ballad, I love ballads anyway, but uh, I thought it was great, but I didn't think that it was gonna have the effect that it did. Matter of fact, Henry and I played uh, the Beatles Fest in Liverpool I don't know, a couple of years ago, three, four years ago. And I hadn't seen Henry since the wing days, you know. And uh, we were both different people by that, by that situation. But there we were showing up at the, in Liverpool, and they had a band there that knew Wings materials. And Henry and I hadn't played together in maybe 30 years, I don't know. And we played uh, My Love. And uh, it was I get goosebumps thinking about it. It was brilliant. It was just... Henry was, you know, Linda was gone, and, uh, and that was the song that kind of took Henry out of the band. <clears throat> and he played that guitar solo just like he played it on the record, but better. It had more feeling. We just, both of us had tears in our eyes. It was just like one of those very, very uh, special moments in time, you know. Yeah.